All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Langdon. Uh, welcome to Emerge Gallery. And today we are going to be going over the Something Blue show, um, which uh, opened last week. Uh, so I'm going to go over each piece in the show and I'm going to present each piece for the artists that aren't here. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the work. And then for the artists that are here, I'm going to uh, let them uh, speak about the work. Uh, so well, I'm here at the gallery in Saugerties. Uh, we're just going to do a quick little, quick little run through. We've got a great window display here. Um, we've got three pieces from the show. Uh, we'll probably get a reflection here. The uh, canvas that's hanging is by Larry Caveney. Um, the sculptural piece right here is by uh, Lisa Parisi, or Donna Parisi, I'm sorry. And then the other sculpture is by uh, Gulner Babayeva. Uh, so it looks really, really stunning. I think it's really welcoming. Uh, and then, you know, you come in and we've got uh, the show on the wall. Uh, I gotta say, it was a difficult show to hang because there's a lot of we don't have coffee? and um, Ma? That, um, that sometimes can be uh, uh, a challenge. Um, so I wanted to make sure that they're, uh, um, you know, a nice flow going through the whole show. Uh, so this is the show on the wall, and we're going to be taking a look at each piece. There's 33, or there's uh, 66 pieces on the wall here at the gallery in Saugerties, and then there's an additional 33 pieces um, on artsy.net. Now, artsy.net is a uh, website for brick and mortar galleries to exhibit and sell their work. Uh, it's a great opportunity um, for Hudson Valley artists to be seen, um, you know, pretty much all over the world. Uh, so the, the show is uh, presented on artsy.net. Look for Emerge Gallery and why. Um, and um, you can see the sh that show, previous shows, and there's also some online exclusives as well. Um, hold on one sec. Uh, so we're going to take a look at uh, each piece. I'll show you. Uh, we'll start by having a look at the artsy site. Hold on. No. All right, great. We'll have a look at, uh, we'll start by having a look at the, uh, the artsy page and then um, we will get going. So when you go into artsy, um, you will see Emerge Gallery and then this is the uh, Something Blue um, exhibit that um, you can have a look at. There's going to be a, it's not up yet, it's, uh, it will be soon, but there's a virtual room that you can um, have a look at. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a way, of, a different way to uh, view the show. This way you're looking at each, each piece individually uh, in order to get information, you would need to uh, click on each piece, which we are gonna be uh, looking at it that way. But for the uh, virtual room, which again will be up um, later today, I'm hoping, I don't know why it's not up now, um, it's all of the work with the text um, below it, underneath. Um, so it's just two different ways of looking at it, but today we're gonna be looking at it this way. Um, so uh, the first piece that we are gonna have a look at is by um, Dorothea Marcus. This is called uh, Pac-Man. Uh, Dorothea, are you with us? Do I see you here? Hi, Robert. You are here. Dorothea. Do I see you? No, I don't. I thought you were going to be on today. Okay. Uh, well, Dorothea's, uh, Dorothea's work is, uh, Dorothy usually does collage. Is she here? No, no, no. I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, Dorothea usually does collage. This is a piece that uh, she, she did um, this year. It's called uh, Pac-Man, and it uh, sort of has that whole uh, Pac-Man look, which um, as an 80s kid, uh, that... Um, that really appealed to me. Uh, so the, uh, let me see the dimensions. Dorothy is an artist in Woodstock. It's uh, the dimensions are 11 by nine. It's framed to 15 by two.
Uh, Gina, our next uh, next artist is uh, Gina Petrovic. Hi, Robert. How are you, Gina? Uh, it's Petreka. <laughs> Petreka, I'm sorry. No, that's how, long okay. know, how long have I known you, Gina? Uh, this is called Reach for the Sky. So, Gina, tell us a little bit about uh, about your piece. Well, I shot this at Melbourne Park. It's like maybe ten minutes from my house, and that's in New Jersey, right? Yeah. Okay. Like every every spring, you know, the cherry blossoms bloom, and just this one particular day, I just wanted to like shoot upward, um, and I just loved how clear blue the sky was. Like, I mean, as a photographer, it's hard to find like a good sunny day once in a while where the shadows don't go get in the way or people. So this was just really interesting and beautiful just the way the sky looks it doesn't even look real but <laughs> just very very clear i just loved it um and what are, what are what are your usual subjects with photography gina i do a lot of nature and still life and i've been going to the city a lot so i've been shooting like the buildings like architecture and murals um Great. i don't photograph a lot of people so I guess I'm doing like more fine art type stuff right um but I just love color and I don't always have like a particular reason for shooting but when I see something super colorful or just interesting I just always like to shoot it because I never know when I'll see that particular thing again and sure. especially like with the sky this day I just had to get it just in case there was like clouds or bad weather. <laughs> well, I got to say these, these are my, my favorite trees. I was just in New Jersey and they're starting to come out now. The cherry blossoms, um, all, uh, you know, gorgeous, uh, pinks and whites. Uh, my mother's street is lined with them. And then every year we, we, you know, take a walk, uh, drive to Branch Brook Park in Newark, uh, which I'm sure. Yes. You um, so it's, it's a really, really beautiful spectacle. Uh, to see na natural spectacle. Uh, thanks, yeah. Gina. <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks, Rob. Good to see you. All right. Next, we have uh, two pieces by uh, Gertrude Abramson. This is called Waterfalling Eight. Uh, water. Uh, Gertrude is from Chinchester, New York. Uh, this is called Waterfalling Eight. It is a pastel piece, and then the uh, second piece is um, the mouth, which actually you can see right behind me. Um, that is right here. This is 19 by 27 and this is mixed media. Okay, next we have uh, two pieces um, by Kathleen Anderson. Uh, the first piece, Kathleen is in um, Phillipsport, New York. Uh, this is from, the first piece is called Tuning Score for the Nervous System. It's copper foil paint pencil on paper. Um, and then the second is, um, is number 10. They're both in the series. Uh, it's called the, uh, the Tuning Compositional Strategies and explores the language of abstraction as a means of distilling the intersections of art, energy healing modalities, um, percursive patterns and sound into a visual, visual, visual investigation of the body's rhythms and alignment. Drawing from a range of sources, the physiophysiology of Jin uh, of, uh, Jinsun Yutsu, uh, the Brazilian cam, I'm butchering these names, sorry, uh, drumming, uh, neural pathways, meridian points, uh, pulses, particles, networks. She utilizes the material, uh, the copper, for its conductive uh, therapeutic qualities and ability to hold and transmit energy. Referencing the spine, nervous system, and the right-left polarities of the body, the vibratory patterns interact as a kind of radiation from within the object, exploring how the body unifies and balances itself. Uh, so this is the uh, number eight, and then uh, this is uh, number 10. They're really beautiful. Um, and again, it's, 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 uh, they deserve to be seen in person. So the tuning score for the nervous system invites participation and collaboration and have generated new compositions and unexpected sound interactions between musicians 
and the graphical scores in multiple architectural settings, including galleries, recording studios, and private homes. And there is a link on the Artsy page that you can um, have, uh, have a listen to some of the music that, um, that she's talking about. Okay. Um, next, we have uh, Gulmer Babayeva. Uh, Gulmer, I, I've exhibited a number of Gulmer's pieces before. This, this piece is a really gorgeous, uh, gorgeous piece. I'll give you a couple different um, views of it. It is ceramic um, and it fits really just beautifully into the, into the blue show. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the arrows here. This is the uh, disadvantage of having so many windows open when you're trying to navigate around Zoom. Um, okay, well, I'm not able to. Uh, so uh, please have a look at, um, we'll zoom in a little bit though. Have a look at the artsy site because there are some um, side views, some back views, or just come into the gallery because it really is stunning. Uh, okay. Uh, Jay Balaceros. Um, Jay is a new artist he, or a new uh, resident uh, to uh, Socrates. This is called Windows. It's eight by 10. And then the second, uh, come on. I, as I said, I've been having some pretty bad internet problems here. The second is called Winter at Storming uh, Mountain, um, which I believe is Storm King. Uh, so let me just see what Jay has to say about, uh, about the windows. Uh, oh, they are prints. They're uh, Jay lives in Socrates. They're both from uh, Windows is from 2019, and um, Winter at Storming Mountain is from 2022. Next, we have Sophia, and I know Sophia is here. Uh, I'm so glad you were to join. To uh, were able to join us, Sophia. And I got it. I I'm sorry. I need to um, turn this around. I wanted to say to just tell a quick little story. Um, when uh, the piece was submitted, it was submitted um, in a, a landscape version um, horizontally, um, which I liked. Uh, but then when it was delivered, it, um, uh, it was signed so that it, and, and um, uh, wired so that it's hung vertically. Um, and I actually, I like it both ways, but I do like the vertical better. So um, uh, apologies for that. I will, um, I will change it. Um, but, uh, you know, the beauty of abstract is you can, you can hang it multiple ways. Um, so, uh, yeah, please, uh, Sophie, I'm sorry to take up your time. Go. <laughs> no, no worries. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like as soon as it was in the frame, it just, it made a lot more sense vertically. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this is new ice age. I made it, um, in 2021. It was, it was January of this year. Sorry, last year. Um, and the idea here was more just like playing, it's, it's ink on paper, it is 14 by 17. And the idea was kind of just playing with the contrast of like straight lines and freeform lines and kind of seeing how they play with each other, how you can break up the space on the paper, but still have like freedom of, of movement between the different lines and kind of playing around with how it all comes together. It was a lot of fun to make. What about the second piece? Uh, there is a second piece called Shore's Edge. This is collaged ink on paper, right? Yeah, this one, um, I had a lot of fun making this one too. So the, the center pieces that are um, kind of have like the blue and tannish strokes, that was one piece that I made on its own. And then I kind of cut, cut it all up, put it all together on a new piece of paper and this was kind of exploring like how two distinct beings kind of come together, like have their boundaries, but break through those boundaries to create something new. Nice. They're both really, really beautiful. You're, you're in Kingston, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, I was very pleased to meet you the other day, and um, you know, I'm I'm really, really pleased to uh, to have a, you know, to be introduced to your work and to have it in the gallery. Um, thank, you. thank you for joining us today. And um, yeah, please uh, have a look at, at some of Sophia's, Sophia's work over um, on, on Artsy. Um, and is there any place else where people can see your work? Um, no, I'm part of a drawing collective, an art collective at The Draw in Kingston. And occasionally Great. we have shows there, but just at Emerge for now. 
Okay, fantastic. Well, I'm pleased to have you. Thanks, Sophia. All right, next we have uh, Ms. Joan Barker, who I just saw yesterday, I think, was it? Um, I just saw you here. I know you're here. Here I am. Hi, Robert. Oh, I see you. Great. Hi, Joan. Okay. Hi. Uh, welcome. So um, tell you. us about A Marble. This, I like this piece a lot. I like the whole series, by the way. Um, Thank you. So, yes. Well, it's a photography. It's a photograph. And I am using a macro lens to see really close up fragments uh, of air bubbles and melting in ice along with the marble. And I achieve this by freezing a block of ice where I have embedded various objects. In this case, it's a marble and there I use it. I was using the same water that I had plant fragments in and fruit. So there are um, the organic, wispy organic uh, objects look like um, things floating in space. And I, the idea of blue is often reminiscent of sky and sea. This picture became a combination of both the sky and the sea because the water is the sea with the ice and the sky looks like the cosmos and that marble was very reminiscent of a planet to me, planet earth, I suppose. And so there's something very organic but also very scientific because the use of glass and lenses to magnify is really uh, intriguing spectacular uh, look into a world and objects that you wouldn't see with your eye uh, without going around with a magnifying glass. And that's how this picture came to be uh, part of that series. It's also exciting when you're photographing in the studio with the block of ice because it's melting and things shift and change. Uh, and that's fascinating because the underneath the block of ice is a layer of water that carries air bubbles and other bits. And I never know where that's going to drift. So there's uh, quite a fascination and the choice to print it on metal seemed appropriate for this particular image and others like it, which have a very strong graphic quality rather than the organic still life fruit, even though of course it's a still life. And that is the ice-like surface. It's ice, it's glass. It's a combination of everything that is happening during the process of making this picture. And there's also a slight depth that you experience when you're looking at the metal print that makes it seem like a layer of ice and something you could enter into or stand on, fragility, melting, it's quite an experience. So that's how this came to be <laughs> in more or less. It's a really fascinating series. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, um, you, you, they can find it on your Instagram account, right, Joan? Some of the others? This one, I don't know if they're on my Instagram uh, but they would be on my website, which okay. is Jay Barker Images. So, but okay. there may be some on the Instagram. I, I can't remember where these things wind up. Just keep right. making new ones. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joan. Good to thank see you. Thank you, Rob. Thank Bye you. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, two pieces now um, by Naomi Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley, I'm sorry, this is called Metallic Berry. Um, it is a uh, metallic ink on um, a uh, postage um, label. And um, oh, it's called, uh, the, the graffiti is called Sticker Slap. It's on a, um, it's on a uh, postage 228 label. It's mixed media and it's in a floating glass frame. Um, Berry is slang for someone very attractive because they are unusual. Um, berries indicate bounty. They symbolize happiness, small blessings, sexual gratification, good health, and financial gain. 
Here a young female figure wears a crown of golden strawberry hiding within bright new spring greenery. The 228 label has become a movement for street artists specifically as an in, inexpensive, mobile and disposable way to show their art. This sticker slap is delicate and innocent, intricate and neatly framed for home display, pure contrast to traditional intentions of the label. Uh, it's a cool little piece and it's framed really beautifully. The second piece by, um, by Naomi um, is called Ancestral Haze. It's mixed media on canvas. It's 10 by eight. Uh, it alludes to the foggy upbringing as a whole. Um, the figure feels young, confused and impressionable, perhaps a young teen. They are staring out blankly and trying to grasp the mist. It is dark and they are alone. The hair and clothing suggest something tribal or native, paying homage to my Native American heritage that I know very little about. So that's Naomi. Uh, we've got a piece by Leslie Bodzi. Uh, Leslie's a wonderful artist that splits her time between Houston and New York. Um, I did a solo show for Leslie last year uh, called Golden Desire, and she was playing with the whole idea of um, our uh, connection to the color gold. Um, some really, really gorgeous uh, work. You can have a look at that on uh, Artsy as well. Um, and then we've got two pieces by Vian Borchet, and, and, Borcher, and, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of your name. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm here. How are <laughs> okay, you, Robert? Great, great. Uh, <laughs> let me find you. Uh, Maybe I should wait, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, my name yeah, is- I see you, yes, 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 I see you, great, great. Tell me the pronunciation of your name again. I'm, I'm just- so My really name curious. is, my first name is Vian, which is like Vian, Vian Water. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Without the E, so Vian and uh, for sure, yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, now, Vian, I've, I've had, uh, Vian, I've had your, your a few of your pieces in yeah. some of the works. Um, yeah. Beautiful, really, uh, really beautiful abstract work. So uh, okay. tell us about the, the two blue pieces that we have in the show here. Okay, so I have Atmosphere, which you just had on. Atmosphere, um, and uh, okay. One. Yeah, so this is Atmosphere, and then we've got uh, the wood. And this is, called, uh, this is titled The Woods Can Hear. Yes. Um, and um, so basically, I've been, I've been doing art professionally for decades, <laughs> and I'm also an art educator, um, but people who, who are familiar with my work, they know that uh, blue is actually my favorite color. So... Um, I just love the color blue. It's very calming, it's very soothing. Um, so um, I, I just feel that very much, my soul resonates very well with the color blue. So with these paintings, um, can someone turn down their music? Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, okay, I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that, Vian. No worries, no worries. Um, so, um, so basically these, paint, these paintings are acrylic on canvas uh, and they're abstracted landscapes. And in the paintings um, with atmosphere, um, I live by the woods. So this is kind of like my environment, what I see all the time, uh, what eventually rubs on and eventually becomes part of uh, my artwork because my artwork is basically uh, what surrounds me, what's my, my environment, what I see around me. Um, so the paintings are based on the woods by my house and especially seeing the woods at a specific kind of light, mm -hmm. um, more or less like overcast light where you mainly see the blue tones, the bluesy tones, more like the blue gray. So I tried, especially with atmosphere, which is the first painting to bring in the different palettes of the blue hues and tones and the gradations and the scales. Um, so this way you can see different kind of like blues within one painting, the first one you had over here. Um, so um, in this, and again, it brings back to the idea of capturing the atmosphere with all the different colors. So the atmosphere becomes all the different colors. So that's uh, the capturing the colors with the different blues and the different hues. Um, and then with the, with the other painting, which is called uh, the, the Woods Can Hear, that's more kind of like a, I had a conversation with a scientist and we were talking about, I love plants. I'm very nature oriented, nature forward thinker person. And I love plants. I love to uh, plant uh, in my garden. And I'm very aware of 
the environment and um, just, I love everything green. So I was talking, um, just out of reacting to my plants, I was talking to a scientist about um, just the life of plants. And we, we had this conversation where, where plants, the woods can hear, they can hear you, they can hear, they say that plants can hear especially high pitched voice or the female voice um, and they react some, to it sometimes. So um, we, I feel like by the title, kind of using that title, the woods can hear, in a way kind of we are being part of the, our environment, we are part of nature, nature is part of us as well, and we are reactive to each other as well. But also it's more of a scientific exploration to, um, so I would say to a world that we don't really know much about. And I feel that there's not much research into it. So that's that was also kind of like, what is more to it? I mean, I'm sure there's so much in the world of plants and botanics that we um, still have not studied. So that's kind of my take on it as well. Um, kind of like thinking and exploring, um, not only artistically, but also scientifically, the world of um, what, what is all around us, well, the woods and the plants and everything and how they feel and they react and all that stuff. So that's kind of like the idea behind the woods can hear. But uh, obviously with two, both paintings, I wanted them to be painterly because I'm a painter and that comes through. Um, and I wanted <clears throat> to, I'm, I also love very strong brush strokes and uh, the gestural take uh, on artwork. So that's pretty much uh, kind of the, 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 basically the spirit behind creation of the artwork. Yeah, the, the movement is really beautiful in both, both Thank places. You. Thank you so much. You. Uh, great to have you know, some more of your work here. Uh, there's there's a few more pieces uh, that, you can, that you can check out on Artsy from uh, I think the last two shows. Yes, yes. Right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I will, uh, I'll, I'll see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, two pieces by uh, Christina Brady. Christina is an artist uh, here in Saugerties. Uh, this is, uh, there's two pieces, moon setting. Uh, this is moon uh, rising actually. And then the second piece is um, moon setting. It's indigo dyed paper and some encaustic wax. They're five by five framed to 11 by 14 and they're both from 2021. They come from an explore, exploration in dyeing paper with indigo dye and combining the results with an encaustic study. The artist believes there is a sense of ancient wall art, a sense of a found relic. Uh, that's Christina Brady. And Christina had a couple, couple other uh, pieces um, in the last two shows as well. Uh, Undine Brode, again, I'm, I'm probably butchering it, Undine. Um, this is called Too Blue. Um, it's a porcelain piece. And uh, at first I thought it was a cow, but um, it's sort of an undefined animal. It's got a, a great little nose, so you can, oh, it almost looks like a sheep. Uh, but I, I think because it had the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the somewhat of, of uh, you know, the dots it may be, or the, the patterns of a cow. Um, let me see if I can go back and show you another. No, 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 okay. Uh, so that is um, two blue. And then the second piece here uh, by, by uh, Ondine is called Pink Elephant. It's a bird cage, uh, blue faux fur, and it's polyester stuffing. It was made in two, uh, 2009. It's a riff on the well-known phrase, there's a pink elephant in the middle of the room and comes out of the artist's experience of having a mother who is an alcoholic. Uh, Susan Burlew, I've got uh, one sculptural piece from Susan. Uh, Susan uses a lot of um, pottery shards that she uh, you know, pulls together uh, to create uh, one piece. I don't think you're here, Susan, are you? No. Susan lives in Kingston. This is a large box. Um, it's textured, the textured slabs are torn and pressed into a mold. The overall form is a, a, a truncated triangular pyramid. 
The patchwork of torn slabs creates patterns on the outer surface, and the designs of shapes and colors are derived from these patterns. The geometric drawings add contrast to the organic shapes while complementing the forms as a whole. And you can see up here, this is a top that comes off uh, this little piece here. Next, we have two pieces by um, uh, Heather Cadaldo, Cadalzo. Uh, Heather lives in New Jersey. Uh, this is called Pompano Beach. Um, Heather, are you here? I don't think so. No. Uh, Pompano Beach is a uh, watercolor piece. It was created, uh, Heather lives in Howell, New Jersey. Uh, it's a watercolor. It was created in 2021. It was a plein air study while the artist was vacationing in Florida uh, this past December. Um, a perfect, beautiful weather day. She studied the new Florida blues so different from her New Jersey shore ocean and sky. While she relaxed and observed, waiting for her husband to emerge from the horizon on a sea kayak where he was spearfishing. She typically uses watercolor when she does travel studies as it allows for portability and spontaneity. And then the second piece by, um, by Heather is called Beach Haven Morning. It's an oil on canvas 24 by 18. Um, the recent series is based on her personal observations of New Jersey sunrises and the connection of the water to the sky. Working on her own photography, she created this piece to capture the glistening of light off the water and the penetrating warmth of the morning sun. Every time she witnesses a sunrise, she feels connected to the energy of nature. She feels recharged, inspired, and alive. This painting encapsulates that awareness we all strive to remain connected to in our busy lives. So that's Heather Cadaldo. Uh, Larry Caveney. Larry, are you here? No, mm, I know I messed up last time you were here. I didn't see you. Um, let's do a, I know you said you were going to be here today. I did mess up by sending out the wrong link in the second email and I apologize to everyone profusely. Um, okay, Larry's not here. Um, I'm sorry again, Larry. Uh, this is a, um, a piece that's on unstretched canvas, as you saw earlier. Uh, it's hanging in the window and it looks beautiful. Um, it's an acrylic piece. It's a crow in flight. Um, and it is on raw canvas. I, I know of Larry. Larry lives in uh, Tobuk, I think it's called. Um, Tobuk, Arizona. Tubac, Tubac, Arizona. Um, and I follow Larry on Instagram. And I, you know, I like his work a lot. And he has a, um, he'll bring his canvases out on the weekends and sort of set up a, um, a, a yard gallery, which I thought was, was so clever. Uh, so this is Larry Caveney. This is called Crow in Flight. What do we have here? Ah, Arabella. Next we have Arabella Colton. Um, hold on, Arabella. I don't know why this is coming up like that. All right. Um, so Arabella uh, is here in the gallery with us, and um, she's going to tell us about the Esopus piece um, that she's got. Hi, Arabella. Hi there. Um, so this is done with my trusty iPhone, and it's a little bit okay, of it's a little bit of an homage to Lee Friedlander, one of my very favorite photographers, who frequently put himself his own shadow into the shot. And it's also a bit of an homage to uh, the animals that I love because I look like I have a little tail. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the Asopus Creek when it was frozen over in the winter. And I'm lucky enough to look out on it from my apartment. Nice, great. Uh -huh. um, Arabella also has a wonderful series uh, on, on artsy called the Wall Dog Series in San Francisco in the 1990s. There was an unknown artist that would uh, go around San Francisco and paint dogs on walls. Um, and they would just pop up uh, you know, when you least expect it. And it became a thing to go search them out. Myself included when I lived there, it was always, mm -hmm. always, always fun to do that. You find them in every neighborhood. So Arabella went out and photographed them. Um, and there's a show on Artsy called, uh, you know, the Wall Dog series. So if you're, if you'd like to have a look at those, those are all up online too. There's how many, about 30 or so? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, great. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Arabella. Oh, here's Arabella. Ellen Crimmins. Okay, so next we have uh, Ellen Crimmins. Ellen lives in Salt Point, New York. This is called Moon Rising. It's oil, 24 by 27, created in 20, uh, 2008. Uh, Moon Rising is a mood piece depicting dawn at a lake. The monochromatic color harmonies have always interested me, and this piece really brings out dramatic values. Um, it does, that's for sure. And it's, um, it, it's one of the, one of the, uh, the favorites and more popular in, in the show, or at least, you know, the ones that uh, folks have been pointing out. Uh, so uh, this is Ellen Crimmins, congratulations. Uh, next, we have Shelly Davis. Shelly is, Shelley is a, uh artist living in Malden, which is a little hamlet here in Socrates. This is called uh, Blue Door. Um, it is acrylic on canvas. It's actually called Blue Door with chippy paint and rusty lock. It's 11 by 14. It's brand new, 2022. Um, there's a lot of work of Shelly's on um, Artsy if you'd like to have a further look. Next, we have Harriet, Barman, uh, uh, Harriet Foreman Barrett, uh, who lives in New Pultz. And I think, Harriet, you're here, aren't you? Yes? No? OK. All right, uh, we have two pieces by Harriet. Uh, this is called Transitions. And for this first piece, Transitions, this is oil on canvas. Uh, it is 30 by 15. Uh, the different planes of existence, different realities, we're never alone. With the loss of loved ones, what came through in this painting was the comfort that the energy is never gone and we are never alone. Uh, I have a number of different uh, pieces of um, Harriet's on Artsy. She's been in a number of different shows. A lot of them are very spiritual. Um, there's another one um, called Resilient Spirit. This is uh, 2020 very art deco. Uh, next we have a, a, an ab, two abstract pieces by uh, Raiden Frost. Uh, Raiden is an artist in, um, and I hope I pronounce, I, you know, I've been working with her for so long and I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong. Um, I don't think I am though. No. Uh, this one is called, um, don't look up. It's acrylic on canvas. No, it's acrylic on paper. I'm sorry, it's 20 by 20. Um, at, it's an abstraction of the current state of mind. The, uh, I'm sorry, this is aerial view. This, this is don't look up. And this is 20 by 20. Um, aerial view, the first piece is, uh, that's pastel on paper and that is 12 by 18. Um, and it's abstract inspired by nature. All right. Hi. Let's move on to the Gabriels. And I know I know they're here. Um, let's see. I got to share a new screen with you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. As much as I. Uh... OK, here we go. Hi, folks. How are you? Okay, we have uh, two pieces by Gat. Gat, are you here? I saw Rainin. Yes, I am. Hi. Right. Uh, oh, I see you. Yep, yep. Okay, let me let me bring you up. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Oh, okay. Welcome. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, so we've got two pieces. Uh, we have uh, we have flowers, and then the uh, second piece is called Far, Far Away. Uh, so which did you want to talk about first? Um, we can start with um, Far, Far Away. It's, okay. Um, it's a small painting on wood. It's um, acrylic on wood. And uh, it's part of um, um, a series that I started um, taking um, figures full of healing energy and uh, meaning and just take them out of the context and just if you think about it it's far far away but it can be everywhere in my 
in my perspective. And I'm, I'm, I see it as a healing energy, but at the same time, you can call it anything. Because um, I wanted to, to um, transfer the healing and the uh, compassion without the religious aspect of it. Did you want to say anything about flowers? Um, well, this is, um, this painting um, is oh. very layered. Um, no. I don't know um, what else to say beside that it's like, someone said it's like an abstract of the, um, named his work as a abstract of the current mood. And I love it because um, I, I feel like these flowers really project uh, emotions that I've been through um, during uh, last year. And uh, yeah, there's I, it, there's a there's a real um, lightness to this that that really yeah. it, it's a great feeling looking at looking at this. It brings yeah. a lot of levity. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wonderful. I'm pleased to have them both here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. And then um, next we have uh, Rain and Gabriel. Rain and you have two pieces. Hi. Hey, hi. Welcome, hi, welcome. Everyone. Uh, so you have Awake. And then uh, the second piece you have is Fox and Chicken uh, with Moses smoking. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, talk so, about um, uh, I will I will start with awake even if you can jump to that yeah um, so my walk is uh, you know it's interesting because we, are, we see it here in front of uh, the screens and language is the drive behind everything that we are doing and we tend to forget that um, when it comes to language um, it starts with a feeling and then a thought, and then we say something. So the experience of language is, is profound uh, on ourselves and also to the person that listen or the public in this case. And I'm trying to bring uh, all this aspect of experiencing words uh, into reality and, and into the dimension that we can actually see and experience. So words become objects and words have meaning beyond just uh, the plain um, black and white text that we see on papers. Um, and on that level, I'm working a lot with words to bring them up and allow the observer, uh, anyone that participate in watching it, uh, experience exactly what they try to say to him or what we are trying to communicate. Um, and there's, a, there's the second circle which I'm working on, and this is leading me to the second walk with Moses. Uh, it's the iconography of stuff. Uh, when, when, I, when I spoke about the wake, uh, um, the result is basically an icon, creating an icon with the meaning of an icon, with a representation of an icon that encapsulates everything around it. And I think with this walk, this, the, the other series, which I call the heroes, Moses is one of them. I'm actually taking a few of these icons, a few of these words and put them together and examine the relationship between them. Um, sometimes without thinking, sometimes with thinking, uh, and the end result speaks by itself. You had a really fun piece in uh, a show maybe a year or two ago of Elizabeth. Um, and then there was another one, Queen Elizabeth, and then there was another another one of Philip. Queen, Queen Elizabeth, for example, is uh, yeah, it, it, it's another hero of mine. Uh, yeah. I have uh, several awards with Queen Elizabeth. One of them, I think, the the two that I'm presenting in Nazi, One of them is Elizabeth Pigeon yes. in Cactus with with Elizabeth the yeah. second. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then I have another one which is uh, Philippe Petit, uh, the the famous. Uh, guy who crossed between the two towers, uh, the oh, two right. towers of New York, yeah. mm -hmm. and Philippe Petit uh, practically crossing the space uh, on the body of Elizabeth the Queen. They're a, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Thanks so much, Raynan. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. <clears throat> All right. Next, we have uh, Andrea um, Andrea Geller. Uh, where are you? I'm here. I see. Oh, here you are. Okay. How are you, Andrea? I'm I'm doing great. How are you doing, Robert? I'm doing I'm doing well. Thanks. Good to see you. Yes. I uh, love this piece. Thank you. Yeah, it brings me brings me right back to my childhood. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I could see my mother sitting in that chair and me in the ocean. <laughs> it's interesting you bring that up because, um, yeah, I do watercolors at the ocean and um, I also take a lot of images uh, because I am interested in water and um, it's tough. It's a such, just such a tough subject that um, I'm always engaged in it. But anyway, this one was really the absence of the figure, which... Um, I will get to a couple of images of uh, my parents who were always in beach chairs and then sometimes they weren't in beach chairs. So it actually is, uh, since I'm a figurative painter, it is um, speaking about the absence because that's a chair that, you know, people usually sit in. Also, I should add, I'm a New Jersey based artist. So many of my, um, my water scenes along the coastline, I do travel to other places, but that one was of the New Jersey shore. Yeah. Uh, Andrea is the, um, the queen of water, I should say. She's, you have, you, you do, I mean, you master water. You, she, Andrea has a number of series, one of them, um, uh, being uh, a pool, the pool series. We've I've had a couple pieces in uh, different shows, various shows um, of her pool series, um, and to see them recently hung all together was really, really wonderful. Because I've been seeing you creating them, you know, as they come together, but to see them presented all in one place was 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 a, a real thrill for me. So yeah, well, I I was grateful that you came and saw it because actually I had never seen them all together either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it does change it. I do want to add, uh, Robert, this piece was created for this show. Um, oh, great. The, the blue chair. So uh, it was always good to have a, a, a inspiration. <laughs> um. Uh, the other series that that the water series that Andrea has, uh, one of them is a show on Artsy, is um, uh, the Bath series, which is um, a series of thirty six, I believe, um, twelve by twelve on panel pieces of the whole ritual of uh, preparing, uh, bathing, and then um, you know, uh, telling yourself off. It's a really gorgeous series. So please have a look on, on Artsy for those. Thank you. And I just want to mention about the other one that you, you had up briefly. Um, oh yeah, I was going to say, let's go from Jersey to the Galapagos. Exactly. Now I okay. never got to the Galapagos. I so have whenever not ever anybody goes, you haven't either. <laughs> so whenever anybody goes anywhere, I'm sort of like going with them um, in my, in my imagination. But anyway, I did get, this is my nephew and he did swim in the Galapagos. And my sister had asked me to download some images, so I just got stuck on this one. And I also was ex uh, just experimenting, instead of working with oil, I was doing uh, acrylic on paper and I was really enjoying um, just changing the material. And I, that was really what this was part of. Um, but also that the figure becomes part of the water and that it, it is an endless experience. Great. Well. Thank you again, Andrea. And I probably will um, see you at Trader Joe's next time. I would love to see you, see you there again. <laughs> Thanks right. again, Robert. Yeah, you got it. Take care. Okay, uh, next I've got uh, a really beautiful piece. Um, this has been a popular one in the show too. This is called Tuscan Landscape. It's a uh, fabric piece by Denise Giardulo. Um, this one really deserves to be seen in person. Uh, it, the, Photographs don't really do it justice, um, but it is a uh, fabric piece and it is a done all um, by machine. It's a Tuscan landscape. Next, I have two pieces by Patty Gibbons. Patty is an artist in um, Kingston. This is a gorgeous uh, oil on canvas. It's a small piece, 12 by 12. It's called, it's downtown Kingston, uh, Kingston, New York. And 
if you're familiar with traveling on 209 from, um, I guess, from the bridge towards Kingston, you'll come across this scene in the distance of a uh, church tower. Um, and sometimes, you know, when it's when the, the fog is coming over, it's just gorgeous. And I think Patty just captured it beautifully. Um, so uh, this is oil on canvas, as I said, it's um, 12 by 12. It was inspired by a very foggy day heading towards downtown Kingston. The church spire pierced the fog and the phone lines read like crosses against the dark hills. Uh, the second piece is called uh, The Gothamist. Um, this is oil on paper. It's, it, this is a small piece as well, eight by eight. It's inspired by the artist's many trips to New York City where architecture bridges the past with the present and holds captive the many untold stories of its inhabitants. So those are two pieces by Patty Gibbons. I have a, a small show of uh, Patty's smaller abstract works up on Artsy. Um, it had closed maybe about a month or so ago, but the work is, is still available and you can still uh, have a look at, at, at that as well. Uh, Susan Griffin, uh, this is called Starling Number One. This is pastel. I don't think you're here, Susan, are you? No. This was created in uh, 2001. Um, Helen Gutfried lives in, is an artist from New Paltz. Um, Helen, I don't think you are here. Oh, why is, let's see. As I said, I've been having lots of problems with the internet today. Uh, this is called Baby Blue. It's mixed media. It's 11 by 14. Um, baby Blues. Um, ever feel like you're just a wee babe, just trying to make your way in the big bad world? Then you are this baby, blue with the weight of it all but always looking towards the light. Uh, next we have Christine Henninger. Christine, are you, I saw you here. I think you're here. Hold on, hold on, where are you? Oh, I see you, great, uh, you're on mute. If you, want to, uh, if you want to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, All right, can great. You, yep, yep. you can hear me? Yeah, okay. can you fine. Good to see you. And, and boy, is that a blue. <laughs> nice to see you. Yes, it is. It's a real blue. Yes. Um, that blue is, uh, well, I love color and I love the colors of Mexico. And there's that this particular blue that I was not able to duplicate here at all until I went to the library and got this wonderful book of the, the colors of Mexico. And Frida Kahlo's house was, there's a picture of it and it's this blue. So I brought it to, to the paint store and they were able to scan it and actually give me a can of this blue, which we call Azul Anil. It has a tilde over the second, the N in Anil, Azul Anil. And I can get it now whenever I want it. And I've painted several things with this blue. <laughs> now, Christine, you're, 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 you're calling us from Vermont, right? Yep. Okay, but you're originally from the area, from around I, here. And I lived in Woodstock for some years. I'm originally yeah, yeah, from yeah. the Bronx. I'm originally from the Bronx, but I've lived in Woodstock. Yes. Great. Well, I'm glad you still have your connections to the area. Um, me too. Me too. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. And then uh, Christine has, there's a number of uh, really gorgeous photographs of Christine that's, uh, of, of Christine's that have been in some of the other shows too. So uh, please have a look. All right. Great. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Robert. Okay. Next we have uh, two pieces by Allie Herman. Um, Allie is an artist in uh, Troy, New York. This is called uh, Ocean Splash. It is encaustic and boy, am I loving encaustic these days. Um, so this is encaustic on a panel, it's eight by eight. Uh, it's a new work, 2022. Uh, her work is best described as fluid abstracts representing uh, macrocosmic universes. Influences of color and nature are uh, pertinent in creating these abstract artworks as an attempt to understand um, and rhythmic orders. The creation of each painting, she pushes the boundaries and depth of the paint medium by combining materials such as ink, acrylic, oil, and encaustic wax to create richly colored, luminous works of art. She seeks to expect the unexpected, 
To paint this way allows for continued growth and learning, unpredictable changes, and wonderful explorations. Uh, so this is um, the first piece. This is the encaustic piece. And then the second piece is encaustic um, as well. This is Misty Mountain. This is uh, 10 by 22. And for a different landscape, uh, Barbara, Barbara Holt, is Barbara here? I think Barbara was going to join. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, this. Can you hear me? Oh, you are here. Oh, great. I am oh, here. Right. Yes, I Robert. It's the first time I'm doing it on my phone. That's okay. And, um, don't worry. I have no video. I'm just, you know, audio today. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Then, then yeah. everybody can look at me. <laughs> that, that's right. And we love that. Excellent. Um, great. So, uh, yeah, tell us, tell us about this part. And it was great to see you the other day, you and David both. Right. I did stop in. The show is beautiful. And um, it's, it's, it's great. It's so varied. I know it's hard to put a show together with such disparate works. So I'm looking at this. I like it. It's an oil on canvas, strictly from my imagination. And uh, I enjoy playing with distance as I do. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry, Not go ahead. I um, want to ask you, is there, there's scratching in this, no? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And using a palette knife. Yeah, there's some really, really great texture um, in the work. I don't know if you could really see it that well, well, maybe you can in the photograph, but um, some really, really wonderful texture and movement in this. Thank you, that's what I like. And I agree with you, the encaustic work in this show of yours is beautiful. And that's about texture too, so it's yeah, always absolutely. exciting. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for getting us together. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then the set, we have a piece by uh, David also. Yes, this he is, is not um, participating. That's okay, but this is you. <laughs> it is it is me and our dog. <laughs> and what's the dog? What's your dog's name? His name is Barney. Barney. Okay, great. And he specializes um, in napping and accompanying people who are napping. <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the piece is called napping. Um, that's and, right. And it's uh, twenty-two by twenty-six from twenty-six. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Barbara. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, a small piece by um, Chris, uh, Sue Horowitz. Um, this is called Untitled C. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixed media uh, piece. It's got encaustic, mm -hmm. some film, mm -hmm. aluminum, and it's all on wood. Um, it was created in 2022. Uh, Sue is from High Falls, New York which is uh, right across the road from Socrates. Uh, small in scale, most of my work- Are you here, Sue? No? Okay. Uh, small in scale, most of my work presents a whimsical, curious view of evolution in terms of man's interference. Contradiction and ir irony, irony are components. Mm -hmm. The combination of natural materials with manufactured items reflect an awareness of planned obsolescence within a false sense of permanence. Mixed media techniques include sandblasting, use of resin, and encaustic. Um, and I do want to ask Sue about that map. Where is just someone in here um, just recently? Um, we were talking about um, where this map is. It looks like it's in uh, backwards or in a foreign language, um, but it's very intriguing. Bye, Teresa. Good Bye. to see you. Uh, next, we have uh, a piece by Pat Kelly, gorgeous landscape by Pat Kelly. This is called Along the Hudson. And Pat, I saw you here. Let's uh, here. let me find you and then I'll pull you right up. Great. I see you. Yep. Excellent. Welcome, Pat. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. It's very nice to be here. Um, I... We recently relocated into Kingston, and one of the blessings is I'm only two miles from Kingston Point, and oh. it has wonderful paths that allow me to walk beside the river. So I get to take walks beside the river, 
And every time I go, it's a phantasmagory of the sky, water, light, wind, whatever. And everything affects everything else. And um, these storm clouds are what really took my fancy here. And um, it seemed like it fit in with your theme of your show. Usually I don't have anything that fits. Anyway, um, I love working with pastel and um, it, uh, it has many, many options which I was able to use here. Um, I tend to work on sandpaper and it's um, soft, basically maybe medium and soft pastels. Uh, I have been doing an awful lot with clouds and water recently. Uh, uh, I realize with this new location, I have access to wonderful visual material. So I've been doing a lot of studies of clouds and um, I realized I have a real affinity for the water. I was brought up by it and I really love it. So I hope to do more things like this. And uh, thank I'd love you. to see it. <laughs> thank you. And it's, it, I was really pleased to see this come in, Pat. I know we had spoken, I hadn't, you know, we, we had been in touch a number of years ago and then I hadn't heard anything, you know, we hadn't spoken for a while. So I was really glad to see this come in. Well, um, I appreciate it please because keep in touch. I had, a, you know, a lot of tragedy happen and that's why I dropped out of the site for a while. So I'm yes. really happy to be back in. Well, I'm, I'm really pleased that, that you are. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Okay, uh, next we have a piece by David Kleiner. Uh, David lives in Stone Ridge. Um, this is called Lyric. It's oil um, and mixed media on canvas. And it, it just, it's a classic um, abstract uh, work. Next we have a piece by John Krupa. This is called Winter Barns. It's acrylic on canvas, 20 by 16. And John lives in um, Accord, New York. Veronica, Veronica Lawler. Hi, Robert. Veronica, Veronica. I saw you here. Hi, and, I'm here. Um, <laughs> can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Okay. I, I'm trying to find. Uh, I see you. There you are. Great. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks, Robert. Uh, so Veronica has two pieces um, in the show. Um, the second piece is called Joist. And uh, this, this is on acrylic on wood and the other is on paper. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, please tell us about these, Veronica. Okay, sure. So this, uh, the first one here joining, uh, both of these pieces are part of a series I've been working on for quite a while now. Um, I'm a location uh, artist. That's my background is drawing on location and reportage illustration. So these are based off location drawings I've been doing around Newtown Creek and Long Island City and sort of the industrial areas around that estuary. And um, this particular one, uh, you know, these are the mixed media are sort of smaller moments. What I like to do is I take these location drawings and bring them back to my studio. And then, um, you know, I can go into abstraction because I feel like that really represents more the feeling that you bring back with you when you go out on location and draw. And as these places are disappearing around New York, I feel like that feeling and that impression is what's going to remain. So that's really what I go after in the studio. And the mixed media pieces are smaller moments. So this one in particular is called Joining. And it's, it's really uh, you know, how these big sort of industrial structures come together. And then with the, the flowers and the more organic elements talking about how you know nature breaks through the joining and and i really like to bring these two you know industry and organic elements together and it's really kind of a metaphor also for just this constant evolution that goes on in our cities and um you know and how that that affects the growth of how industry really affects the growth of our culture and so the the other piece joist um is uh, like you were saying, Robert, so this is a larger acrylic painting, it's 18 by 24. Um, and, and actually I also started working with blue when I was thinking of, of this exhibit and thank you for putting it together because it was a nice change to <laughs> go into a blue palette and I really enjoyed it. That's the, opposite for a while. Heard. That's the opposite actually what I heard from a lot of artists that they need to stop from using too much blue. Really? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was sort of nice to get into it. I, I haven't quite given it up yet. I've <laughs> continued. And, and I just want to say that, the, that the, the combination of the blue and the yellow here is just gorgeous uh, in this piece. Um, all right, I'm sorry, go ahead. Continue. No, thanks, Robert. Yeah, no, I, so this is uh, a larger piece along those same lines. Um, and it's, you know, I, I'm also really interested in creating that sort of uh, feeling of dimension and space and movement, because that also is how I think we remember things. You know, we, at least I do, you know, I'm, I'm originally from New York. And so my memories are always based on moving past things and <laughs> the energy of things. So that's really important to me. And the idea of um, the title is Joist. A joist is a, a supportive structure in any kind of construction or industry. And so, again, just talking about how these industrial areas really supported uh, the growth of New York and all the rivers and estuaries of New York have this sort of um, evolution happening from industry to the next, you know, and, and these places are, we're losing these places and probably for, you know, for better, um, areas for our environment and for people. But I also feel like we want to hold on to what they brought us and where we came from. So that's sort of the, the idea behind these paintings. And you also have a really wonderful series about the um, deconstruction of the, is it the Kosciuszko Bridge? Uh, sort of ab abstracted? Yes, yes. That, well, that's actually what started this whole yeah. series was that I, the Kosciuszko Bridge, the old 1930s trust bridge came down Right. They deconstructed it in 2017. And I made some drawings uh, after they sort of had the main explosion. They took it apart piece by piece. And I went to the site quite often and made drawings of that. And I brought those drawings into the studio. And so it's become this series of, you know, like the drawing of the actual deconstruction and then the abstractions that come from it. Um, again, to talk about like, how are we going to remember these structures? Because they were so important to people at the time. Right. And they were so important to um, New York City as a whole, this whole region, that I feel like they deserve something more than just sort of let's get rid of it <laughs> and put in the new. So this is a continuation of that series because it's all yeah. connected along New Town Creek, the bridge. Yeah, to sort of the other taking side. it to the next step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few pieces from the series on Artsy, and then you'll be seeing more this this uh, spring of, uh, of Veronica's uh, works on paper. Thanks, Robert. Excited for that. And congrats on the show. It's really another beautiful show. Oh, thanks. It was, uh, this was a tough one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it worked. I'm, I'm really pleased with how it came out. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. Take care. Uh, next, we have uh, two pieces by um, Anne Leith, who I'm really pleased to uh, welcome to the community. Um, hey, everybody. And you're, Hi, you're, you're, um, where, where, you, where did you come from? You're new to uh, something. Right? I've been living um, outside of Philadelphia, um, yes. out in a sort of Brandywine Valley, um, you know, about, I don't know, about 10 miles outside of west of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been working as a landscape painter for many, many years. Although I'm interesting to, uh, listening to you guys, like for example, Veronica, I totally respond to what you were just saying about um, industrial landscapes because in, in that area and up here too, you get all that combination of the, the natural mm. and the urban. Yeah, and exactly. So fabulous. You know, things, <laughs> things like, you know, uh, like, you know, nuclear power plants, you get them down there and just sitting on top of pristine streams and forests and, and Pat, I mean, I've been up here, coming up here for four years now and I've just moved here and the Hudson is absolutely so magnificent. I just did like an ice breaking painting there. And, you know, it's so, but you know, sometimes it's in the studio, sometimes it's um, from life. So it's very exciting. The Hudson Valley has a lot to offer up here, especially to artists. Um, and uh, next month there's gonna be a show at the gallery of all local, uh, lo local landscapes. It's called Locally Sourced. Uh, so that would be an exciting one. Um, and again, I'm going to try to bring in all different styles and mediums, traditional landscapes, and some off-kilter things as well. Uh, so Anne, tell us about this piece. Well, this is um, a picture um, of uh, a ship on the Hudson, obviously, I guess, for us locals. Um, and uh, I did not do it from life, and I did not do it from a photo, although I did occasionally reference a photo uh, just to make sure I was getting the structure of the shipwright. 
Uh, it's 24 by 24, uh, 24 by 24 oil on panel. Uh, and it just, it, it's as you see it, I mean, it just, I hope it describes that sort of element of massiveness and openness and, you know, yeah. Any of these things, it's really hard to get them because they're so big and heavy. And then the water and the sky is so changing and ephemeral that yeah. it's hard, hard to make them sit right. So, I, but this one I think worked okay. Yeah, I think you, you captured that feeling beautifully. Thank you. Uh, and then you have Lake here. This is oil on panel. Yeah, the photo's not great. I'm sorry I didn't send you a better one. This is some. Um, uh, I lived for a long time up in Vermont, and this is a like a trout club lake that that I you know kind of raised my daughter on, and uh, so I know it really well. I used to go out like even on the little boats with like giant paintings, you know, 30, mm -hmm. 30 inch paintings, forty inch paintings on the rowboat, and so it was a. This one actually took me about, funnily enough, about eight years to complete because um, I painted it and then I repainted it and then I went back in and I I added. I changed and added and, uh, and then I finally stopped. <laughs> this is one of those ones where somebody has to say, stand behind you and say, stop. Yeah. Uh, and they probably should have done that like about five times, but so I think I stopped. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's a, that's the, you know, the lake. <laughs> I think many people have that problem, but I think you, you, you got it just in time. <laughs> Thank you. It's a beautiful place. I've painted it hundreds of times. Uh, uh, and there's some kind of Vermont connection here with Saugerties and um, and Vermont. Um, yourself, Christine, and and Linda Linton, who we're going to be bringing up, has a has a connection to Vermont as well. Uh, maybe That's it's right. just the natural beauty that we have around us. It's All right, and we'll the combination of water and mountains. I think is what yeah, exactly. Yeah, small towns and you know, good stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us and welcome to Sorties. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. You will. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, next, we have a piece by uh, Anne Lewis. This is called uh, Floating. Um, Anne is in Kingston. Uh, this is um, ink with collaged elements. It's 20 by 16. It was created in 2019. It was created on a heavyweight archival printmaking stock and it's framed in a good quality clip frame. It sits without a mat or a solid frame edge as she believes that this work looks best with the clean presentation. And I, I agree with you, Anne. Um, I chose blue ink for this body of work uh, intended for use in, it, the ink was intended for use in fountain pens, um, for legal documents and love letters, ink that likes to flow, blot, drip and stain. I simply wanted to explore the ink's energy and let it express itself. As in previous works, this series meandered its way towards the qualities of pattern I favor, repetition, uh, movement, positive and negative space, shape and line. Uh, so this is Anne Lewis. Uh, next we have um, Yvette Lewis, no relation as far as I know to Anne Lewis. Um, Yvette is an uh, artist here in Saugerties. Uh, this is a monoprint with pastels. It's 13 by 11, created in 2015. Uh, the image is one she has come back to in different media. It's of a cave or a womb or the inside of a seed. It is both an expression of new life and a protection from harm or intrusion. The second piece is um, an oil piece. This is uh, called Rebirth. It's a brand new piece from uh, 2022, 16 by 20. It's on canvas. Uh, she says, oil paint is the most sensual and luscious medium expressing a thought directly from the mind through the hand to the canvas. The process is all in color choices and experience with direct mixing of paints. Uh, there is a contrast of the softness of the image and the colors with the idea of protection. It is a rebirth, but not yet opened. The moments before opening is the question, is it safe? Uh, Yvette Lewis, I have, uh, there's a number of works of Yvette's um, that has been in previous shows. So you can uh, have a look at some more of her work um, on Artsy. Uh, next I have uh, Harriet Levanthanos. Uh, Harry, are you here? Do you wanna, you wanna say something? You're, uh, you're on mute, I can see you, but you're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to replace this photo. Um, let's see. 
Hold on one sec. I'm sorry. This is this is not. This is a, a low res photo. I'll get a a a, a higher res up. Uh, this is called Deep Blues. It's graphite ink. Um, uh, graphite and ink on paper. It's 13 by 16, uh, 2021. Um, in this abstraction, uh, my intention is to show the strength and softness of the nuances of one color, namely blue. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a better image of this. I don't know why this is coming out so bitty like that. Hold on. It looked okay earlier. No. Okay, Harry, I'm gonna I'm gonna search one out and I'll put it up for you. Um, next we have um, Maureen Lowenbrammer, uh, who lives in Stone Ridge. This is called Trailing Light. Maureen, are you here? I think I yes, saw you. I am. Hi, Robert. Oh, there you are. I see you. Great. Well, first, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, welcome, and thank Maureen, you. Maureen has two pieces here. This is Traveling Light, and then the second is called uh, Beaver Pond Leaves. Uh, both photographs. So, so thank yeah. you for including me. I appreciate that. Is so there the, either one that you'd like to talk about first? Or why don't you tell us a little bit about this one first? Sure. I so this one. Was, the red streak is great, by the way. Yeah, it was taken on uh, somewhere near Sam's Point, And it was taken during the blue hour of the day around twilight where the, the sun is beneath the horizon and the blue uh, wavelengths dominate. So. I had pulled off and I was um, staring out at this vast landscape and in the distance there were these cars going by and I used the technique of intentional camera movement which is where I um, a long ex um, exposure is combined with movement during the exposure and it can create new um, colors and a painterly feel that really um, is attractive to me. And when I was standing there I and seeing the tiny um, taillights in the distance, I felt very small and it reminded me very much that our time here is very fleeting and you know, we should pay attention, um, you know, because the idea of impermanence tends to pop up a lot in my work in various aspects. So that was, um, that was the first image. And then the second image was also a long exposure, but no camera movement. It was also taken late in the day, uh, not quite the blue hour, but um, it was late winter and there were, just the way the, the light was reflected, it, it really caught a lot of depth and layers and textures, um, giving it a kind of a celestial feel to the water, which is normally, you know, at Beaver Pond, um, sometimes can be quite murky, but it, it's somewhere I return to a lot. And it, it's wonderful that it's always different. Every time I go out, there's something new or different or attractive. The depth is really wonderful in this. I mean, you captured you. it beautifully. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Maureen. Uh, next, we have Linda Linton. Uh, Linda is uh, a, primarily a painter in uh, Woodstock, a uh, landscape painter. Uh, Linda, I saw you. Here you are. Oh, great. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Hi there. Um, and uh, uh, this, is, this is a piece called January Sunrise. Um, and Linda has a number of works on the artsy site, including a um, solo show called um uh Sawkill story of a river and um Linda had spent probably about a year traveling the Sawkill river from the uh from the very top all the way down to where it empties into the Hudson some gorgeous gorgeous um um paintings there and also some stories to go along with them so I'm sorry to take now you go ahead tell us about this piece and, okay. and please well, talk about Sawkill too if you'd like yeah well this one is definitely not uh a river no. It's actually Noank, Noank, Connecticut, looking out over the harbour. And it was so, a, day, it was a couple of years back, and it was something like January 4th, and it was freezing cold. And we went down to the harbour, and the sun started rising. And I took 
a photograph. This is from a photograph. It's totally a studio um, painting. But I just remember it vividly because the sunrise was really quite spectacular. And it was interesting seeing the coast and you get those islands, you know, the little islands and the spits of land way out uh, along the Connecticut coast. And so that really showed it, it was a, it, it, to me, I just look at this and I think it's January, it's freezing cold and it's stunningly beautiful at the same time. But I, I always remember that day. And I think it's part because it was so cold. <laughs> And um, I have a habit of doing things like going out before sunrise. And uh, that's part of the. <laughs> and this is another sunrise. Um, I like to paint the sky. The sky is always changing. Um, and this is actually another sunrise, but the sun hasn't quite got over the horizon yet. And again, it was from a photograph that I took. Very often when I do sky paintings, I'm out there. Um, and especially the larger ones, the big studio pieces like this, you know, you, you have to, I have to use a camera. You can't put all of this on a big, on a larger canvas. Because these canvases are both about 30 inches by 15. Um, and I think something as ephemeral and as constantly moving as the sky, it's very hard trying to paint a larger piece in, in plein air. I have plenty of little tiny five by fives and things like that of plein air paintings of the sky, but you can do them fast. Um, but anyway, yeah, and this is another one. This is another sunrise. Uh, oh, tell, me, tell me, did now for the, the Salk Hill series, did you do a lot of that plein air? Yes, about, it's about 50 50. Okay, great. Um, uh, Obviously, when I was in the wilderness, like in the Indian Head wilderness, you can't take anything because there aren't even any footpaths. You know, you'd have to be drop, have a helicopter drop or something. Right. So that's all based on photographs. And of course, uh, well, these days, you know, they used to say film is cheap. Now it's digital. So, you know, you can take an enormous number of photographs. Yeah. Just for one thing. Yeah. But, um, where, where I was uh, sitting by the river, um, like near the, where it emerges with the esophagus, places like that, the whole painting was, you know, basically painted. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I encourage folks, especially if you're interested in um, some local landscape, have a look at the Salt uh, Hill River series um, on Artsy, because it's, they're, again, they're really gorgeous uh pieces and uh wonderful stories to go along with them uh thanks linda all right thank you yeah right. hold on all right need to bring up a new screen now uh ooh. okay can you see this great uh, next, we have um, Marjorie Maggot. Um, hold on, Marjorie, I don't think you're here. Marjorie's joined us a number of times. Uh, there's a number of Marjorie's work in uh, many, many shows over the years, including a uh, solo show of her work. Uh, this is called Ballad in Blue. It's an abstract piece. Um, uh, Marjorie does some, has some really, really whimsical um, work. Um, it always brings a smile to my face. So um, please, this, and again, this, this is, she's been fooling around with some abstract work. So this is um, one of the abstract pieces. Um, have a look at her other work as well. Uh, Kate Masters, Kate, are you here? I don't think so. Kate is an artist um, here in Socrates. This is called Vibrant Worlds Number no. 8. It is a uh, watercolor piece. Um, it is 12 by 12. It's from the Vibrant World series. It's a semi-abstract landscape painting created in watercolor using a limited palette. The piece has a liveliness which comes from areas of light which have been scrapped into the, or scraped into the paint. Next we have uh, Susan Michael John. Uh, this is a uh, this is called Girl and Doll Number Four. 
It's color pencil. And Susan has been trying her hand at um, colored pencil, which um, she hasn't really uh, done in the past. Um, Susan lives in Woodstock. This is 17 by 22. For the most part, she considers herself to be a colorist and it seeks to create work that can be seen as alive and in most instances, joyful. Uh, my paintings, drawings, and sculpture is invariably figurative. My work process is always difficult, but it is wondrous to me that seem to be able to create animated forms and faces that when I draw eyes, they appear to look right back at me. Ink and colored pencil is a new medium for me. I was under an intense deadline to create a portrait for a loved one lost to COVID, and I didn't have the time to paint. So I did a pencil and ink drawing of Michael Sorkin, um, a visionary architect and writer who was my kind, generous, and inspirational friend. And he felt he gave me the gifts of this medium. In addition, dolls brought great comfort to me as a child, and I have begun a series of paintings and drawings of girls with dolls using antique photographs from the US, Europe, and Asia as, as sources. I seek girls who appear, treasure, uh, who appear to treasure their dolls as, as I did. I also seek to make these portraits taken from black and white sources, very whimsical and colorful. Here I created this drawing for this show, making the coat, the coat blue as its focal point. Next, we have Lucretia Moroni. Uh, Lucretia is an artist living in Malden. Uh, I know Lucretia through her photography, her um, alternative processing photography. She does a lot with gold leaf, some really gorgeous work with gold leaf. Um, and she does some really great cyanotypes, uh, like this one here. Uh, this is called Water, Water Lilies, and it is a cyanotype uh, printed on um, silk. Uh, it's 12 by nine. Um, I take pictures mostly with a vintage Rolleiflex camera, develop the film, scan it, and work in Photoshop to obtain a digital uh, negative. I specifically work in the dark room with palladium salts, chemistry for my prints on gold leaf and in black and white. Uh, for the blueprints, she uses cyanotype chemistry. In both cases, she prepares the artist, uh, the, uh, she, in both cases, I prepare artist paper by hand coating it with the solutions, and then exposing the final contact negative to the light. Both techniques were inv invented in the 18th century before the enlarger was in use. The word cyan comes from the Greek meaning dark blue substance. My fascination for this technique comes from the fact that it is antique, 175 years old. Occasionally, I like when people use cyanotypes. Um, it's, um, I've seen a number of um, really gorgeous uh, ones recently. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, next, we have a piece by Gray Ivor Morris. Um, I know Gray for his mostly mosaic work and colored pencil work, so I was really glad to see this acrylic piece come in. But you can see uh, how the influence of his, of his mosaics in here, or at least I can. Um, so this is uh, acrylic on canvas. It's a winter landscape with a tiny figure. It's 14 by 18, and here is the tiny figure. Mm -hmm. And next I have two pieces by uh, Doug Motel. Uh, this, I was really pleased when this one came in. Um, it's, um, it's paper, um, I can't get a better view of it, but it is, uh, it is on paper, it's watercolor um, and mixed media. And then he has a uh, resin um, on top of it. Uh, this is called uh, The Three of Us. It's 16 by 20. This is one of the earlier pieces in his series. It is watercolor on cradle panel, sealed with resin and focuses on the intersection of three lines of thought or beings. You decide which is which. The second piece by Doug um, is called uh, Commander Waves. This one is watercolor and mixed media as well. Uh, this is, um, it, it looks like this might be a map, but it's not. It is on a clear uh, acrylic uh, panel, almost like a resin. Um, it's encased in a block of epoxy resin, making it float off the wall. I have two pieces by uh, Ingrid Nichter. Um, I've been exhibiting Ingrid's work for, for a bit now. Um, this is called Think About It. Ingrid is a wonderful artist in Kingston. She uses a lot of collage, a lot of different techniques. 
and she brings some really gorgeous texture into her work. Uh, so this one is called uh, Think About It. The second one is called Roosevelt Hills. This is mixed media on canvas as well. Um, and you can see the use of a lot of very common materials. Here's some uh, money, which I don't think is real money and some uh, paper as well. Next, we have Carol Nussbaum. Carol is an artist um, in New Jersey, Short Hills, New Jersey. This is called Italian Flower Blues. And with both of the pieces, the second piece as well, which is called um, Kramer Coll uh, Collage. These are photographs. Uh, the, what are we on now? We're on the Kramer Collage, okay. Um, the Kramer collage, it's an original photo uh, taken of a 3D art sculpture. She's a photography-based artist that significantly manipulates the original images to create mandalas. All artwork is limited edition fine print, professionally printed on archival uh, pigment paper. Uh, the first one, this is called um, the, I'm sorry, Jesus. Italian flower blues. My mind is going today. Uh, so my mandala artwork compromises a variety of photographic subjects, ranging from floral bouquets to piles of fabric in a sewing shop woven and repeated into a mandala or circle. Found in every culture and faith, a mandala is structured around a unifying center and represents both wholeness and the universe. Uh, can be found in pretty much every culture. And then this one here is a... Uh, original photograph that she had taken in Italy of a farm stand. I have two pieces by Jacqueline Oster. Uh, Jacqueline is an artist over in um, uh, West Hurley. This is called Blue Cow and Sunset. It is watercolor on paper. And this is a part of the Animal Vibe series. Everything looks different at sunset. The colors are magical. Maybe a cow could even seem blue. This cow sure is blue. Uh, this is, Jacqueline has a wonderful way with using, uh, you know, creating um, uh, watercolors of, of uh, common objects, especially kitchen objects. Um, this one is called uh, the Blue Food. It's watercolor nine by 12. It's part of the Object the Art series. It's a visual comment on the brilliant blue uh, FCF blue number one, which is a synthetic organic compound used primarily as the blue colorant of processed foods. This piece here is by uh, Donna Parisi. Uh, it is a sculptural piece that's in the window. It's called Climbing to the Blue Window. And ironically, it's in the window. Um, it, Donna lives in Red Hook. It's a concrete and fabric and dyed fabric. Uh, she designs the mold first out of styrofoam and then creates different colors of concrete and poured it into the mold. After deconstructing the mold, she added more color, uh, colorful water, wet concrete. Different shades of blue are a focal point in many of my pieces. I love the way blue translate in this medium. The color blue makes a feel happy it makes me feel happy and gives me great energy. Me too. Um, this piece became a struggle both in my mind and in my hands. However, once I uncovered the blue odd shaped windows, happiness appeared. Uh, these look like they are sort of stained glass uh, cut out, but they're actually indented um, into the um, uh, indentations in the, in the concrete. Next, we have a uh, really nice uh, landscape by Andrea Park called uh, Burger Hill. Hold on, let me get. Oh. I wanted to get the other image for that. Mm, sorry about that. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so this is by uh, Andrea Park. It is called uh, Burger Hill. It is um, oil on linen. Andrea lives in Kingston, New York. Next, we have a photograph by uh, Susan Phillips. Susan split, splits her time between New York and uh, New York City and uh, Sarbanes. 
I think she's spending a little more time in Saugerties recently, which is which is um, glad to hear. Uh, or Tremper, Mount Tremper, New York. I'm sorry. Uh, this is called Cycle. And then we have two pieces by Geraldine Popko. Geraldine lives in Woodstock. This first one is called Wetlands. And the uh, second one is called Ozio Trail. They're both oil on canvas. So um, during the early days of pandemic, I, find myself, I found myself in a rural area of upstate Florida, unable to travel. I was fascinated by the surrounding swamps and wetlands. They were teeming with life that could be threatening, and they reflected the isolation that the world was feeling at that time. Nevertheless, the sun kept shining and the fresh blue water kept moving. The paintings that came out of this time were also a way for me to keep moving forward. So these are two of the paintings that came out of her time stuck in Florida. Um, next, we have Elaine Ralston. Um, we have two pieces by Elaine. Uh, this is called Blue Monday. It's uh, pastel on paper. Elaine, I don't think you're here. A lot yeah, of times you join. You are here. Okay, great. Yeah. Great, great, great. Bye. I'm going to pull you in and let you tell us about it. This is, I, I really like this blue. Well, this was, um, um, I actually did this for your blue show. I had oh. uh, a blue paper that I don't usually paint on, and I had several pieces of it. And I said, mm, I'll, I'll try something with that. And so it's a sanded paper. And the teacup was a gift from a friend that has been passed away for a while. Uh, and I figured I'd just do something. I like doing still life. So this is what came of that experiment. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> this one's a little different for, well, not maybe not, but. Um... Yeah, it's, it's different for my. Yeah, a little different, I thought. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this too was an experiment. It was a group of birch trees that I'd seen on a walk with my best friend, my little girl, Ruby. And uh, you can't really stop and paint with her. <laughs> so um, I just tried to remember it. And uh, then I recreated the whole idea scene in my, from my uh mind's eye, you know, or what I thought, how it looked to me and did the colors in a more, uh, in a, you know, a brighter fashion. I, I wanted to make it pop. So it's called really the like the ladies. Yeah, the three ladies. Yep. I really like the, the three colors, the transition of the three colors here. Oh, this okay. orange is striking. Oh, good. All right, great. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you. Yeah, fun to be here. Oh, I will. She's here. <laughs> Retreat. Bye. Bye. Okay, uh, next we have two pieces by um, Yvonne Rojas Cowan. Uh, this is called Alone with My Thoughts. And then the second piece is called um, Looking at the Open Door. These are both, I mean, this is Cold Wax on Oil. Um, Alone with my, they're both called wax on oil. Um, alone with my thoughts, which is the first is 16 by 20. Uh, it's painted in oil and cold wax on wooden cradle board with floating frame. Um, it's part of the alone together collection created during the 2020 isolation period. Um, and so is the second looking for the open door. Leslie Rolnick. Is Le I don't think Leslie's here. No? Uh, I'm supposed to be. Let's see. Leslie, are you here? You are here. Great. Okay, you're on mute. If you want to unmute yourself, and I'll bring you up. Welcome, Leslie. Hi. So uh, the first thing I want to say is... Um, you know, I was I was there for the opening of the show, and uh, there were many pieces I really enjoyed. Um, but going through everything now this way, uh, slowly, I, I've 
come to appreciate many more of the pieces that I saw than, and it's, um, it's been fascinating to hear everybody's different processes and the different materials that they use and just kind of what inspires them and brings things together. And uh, so that's, it's, that's, this has been a lot of fun, uh, this whole, I, and I really love that you put this on. Um, and I think, I think hearing directly from the artist is, um, you know, is important and a lot, uh, you know, it, it, I think it adds, adds a, a lot more to the work. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us, Leslie. Yes, and um, and also it was the first gallery show that I've been to since the pandemic. So uh, it was just great being out in public and and being able to, you know, just share that energy and 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 uh, look at everybody's work in person. Um, so this piece um, wasn't created specifically for the show. I had happened to I think I worked on this in January. It's um, actually one of the smallest pieces that I have, um, it's a nine by 12 and, um, I tend to work, uh, much larger generally. Um, this one's on paper, um, this strange kind of paper that somebody had given me that handles, uh, oils quite well. And, uh, although most of it is not straight up oil paint from the tube, it's a lot of it is RNF oil sticks which I tend to use a lot of, even in my larger paintings. Um, if you look on the left side of the painting, there is a kind of, it's a little hard to tell here, but if you look at the, that little kind of edge um, along it, that, that is um, a little kind of irregular, that's actually um, because this piece was larger uh, and I needed to fit it into a standard frame, this often happens to me. Um, I'll just pick a size of a paper that I just want to work on. And then it's kind of like, okay, I have to frame this. And, you know, you rather than going to a custom frame, I, I often will resort to standard sizes. So because I had to fit this into a nine by 12, I cut that off of uh, one end of the painting and collaged it back on into a spot that I felt worked with it. Um, and I just kind of liked the, the rhythm of this. And when I called it the end of the road, um, it, it just did feel like, uh, you know, kind of a path that I was meandering down. And um, although it felt very wintry in a certain way with the blue and the white uh, as well. And I don't, I don't walk out around in the winter. <laughs> um, so in any event, uh, I had a lot of fun with this and there is a lot more texture uh, than you can see in the photograph. Um, yeah, a lot of time the photographs don't really show. Yeah, it's hard to do that. Um, and, um, but I do tend to like texture in my paintings and it's either, I use my palette knife um, much, much more than I ever use a brush. And, it's and interesting, that, it's interesting that you brought uh, winter that you, you know, you did this during winter because it's got a real spring vibe. <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel, I feel That's like I want funny. to go outside when I see this. And right. work hard. Right. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's blue for you. I mean, yeah, blue, exactly. it lends itself to so many different feelings and it's yeah. uh, a color that I, I love. There's just so many uh, variations. I've got some turquoises in there that's a little hard to see and a little bit of purplish blues. And mm -hmm. um, Anyway, and then I, I had gotten to a point where I was just kind of looking at it and saying, you know, I, I'm, I, I tend to fuss. So, um, and my paintings tend to be quite dense. Um, and uh, I never really work in just two colors. Uh, I tend to work in a, in a complementary palette and mm -hmm. then I will put in something else that is completely not part of that complementary palette. Um, in this case, it worked, but I did right. feel like the yellow um, just really made things pop. Um, yeah. So I was very pleased with that. 
What about the second piece? I mean, it's there's there's lots of reds in here, but the blue definitely does play a prominent part. Yeah. So um, I come from a very traditional classical training. Um, I I did a number of years down in the city uh, at a few of the schools, but my primary place was my beloved Woodstock of School of Art, um, where I just trained with some of the most wonderful teachers there are. And um, so I got to a kind of wall, a brick wall at one point about seven years ago. And I thought, you know, the only thing I've never tried, because I was just kind of like bored basically with, am I going to do another landscape? Am I going to do another figure? Am I, you know, I just was feeling restless and bored and stuck. And I thought, well, then one thing I've never done is abstract painting. And, and I really like never understood what abstract painting was. Um, I was always very intimidated by going to museums or galleries and seeing these descriptions on the walls that were very um, intimidating. You know, it was kind of like, okay, I'm reading this description of what I'm seeing, but I just really kind of like the colors and the lines. Um, but I have come to understand uh, now. I worked. I started a uh, with a workshop, an abstract workshop with Jenny Nelson at the Woodstock School of Art, and then was in her class for a number of years, um, and then finally set up my own studio at home. And this piece, actually, if you were to excavate it, is an upside down classical portrait that I had done from many many years ago in one of my classes. And it was just one of those pieces of canvas uh, that I have around that um, are these old portraits from portrait class that, you know, it's not like anybody's ever going to like, look at that and say, well, I really love that portrait. But, you know, portraits really usually have more meaning within a different context or setting or if it's personal and so I wanted to reuse the canvas and the way to do it for me in mentally is I just turn it upside down and I start working. So a lot of the red that you see in there is from the original background of the um, portrait. Wow. that's And then I just <laughs> dove in. Yeah, I just dove yeah. in and I called this surrounded because the central blue kind of um, semi-rectangular shape in there. Um, I, I don't typically have something kind of in the middle of the painting. And once I was done with it, I realized I had surrounded it with all of this activity. Yeah. Um, but, it, but then within the blue um, uh, rectangle, I have those moments of, of other uh, smaller bits of uh, color coming through yeah and then the um, other colors really balance it out nicely yeah yeah i red, love blue yeah. and blue and red mm -hmm. and pink yeah. i love color <laughs> so yeah. i, I tend to get a little crazy with it you and then tell. there was a piece that you put on artsy last month i don't know yeah. if you have it available it's called flora flora um, burst yeah and uh, uh, yeah have, have a look uh please go go look on artsy yeah. for it. and <laughs> that one's a very intense you know purple is another of my favorite colors yeah. um so in any event um i'm continuing on my abstract expressionist path but i did start back at the um woodstock school of art for the figures open studio figure classes and there is some way I've had for a long time that I've wanted to bring the figure into some of my abstract work. And I don't know how that's going to evolve. Wonderful. I, well, thank you for, for um, putting these in the show. And I, I definitely want to put in a plug for the Woodstock School of Art. It's, you know, whether you're uh, a seasoned artist or just starting, uh, if you want to try a new technique, um, they are the folks to go to. I mean, they have a high caliber um, list of, of instructors. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a top notch school. Um, yeah. And then the thing that I have to, uh, my last plug for the school also is that there has, I, I literally studied there at one point for a period of nine to 10 years and took many workshops and many teachers and 
there was never a single disappointment in any, any, because everybody that they have teaching there are very beautifully accomplished, gifted artists yeah. in and of themselves, and they are excellent teachers. And that's a very difficult combination to find. I agree. Well, okay, thank you thank so much, you. Leslie. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. See you soon. Uh, next, we have two pieces by Dominic Santis. Dominic lives in Beacon. Uh, Dominic, I saw you here earlier. I'm here. Oh, here yes. you are. Good to see you. Welcome back. You as well. Thank you. Uh, so we have here Storm's Path and then Changing Days is the second. Storm, Storm's Path is at the gallery. Changing Days is um, mm. on Artsy. Oh, uh, thank you yeah. for including them thank both. Um, thank you. Thank you for including them. The show looks great. Thank you. Um, these are, as I stated you know, in the last inclusion, these are from the same series of you know, what, what I'm hoping to. I'm not cutting it off at 100, but um, I'm targeted for that's what I want to at least get to um, of these smaller landscapes. Um, they're, they're a great size too, by the way. Thank really. you. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it started out as in the, the first piece, um, The Storm's Path, it was one of the ones that was a part of the original push to just, I was just capturing these moments um, while I was on the train, while I was driving in and out of, of New York City. Um, so this was actually done on the spot. Um, and it was, it's, I'm just always playing with the depth and the scenes that, you know, these little nooks. Um, and this one was obviously during, well, it was during winter. Um, it, that, that can be obvious, I guess. Um, and just the idea that that depth that is normally seen was kind of covered over. And I was trying to capture that in like little subtle shadows and, you know, nuances of color versus, you know, more de delineated shapes that went farther back because I couldn't see that far. Um, whereas the second piece was in the past year um, when I picked the series back up and it was just a moment um, where it's actually in the fall, but where everything just kind of, the colors just kind of changed. I just kind of, I took a sketch as quickly as possible to bring it back in and started working on it fast. And that's how most of these progresses, you know, a, a sketch and then a fast attempt at remembering all the color. Yeah. Um, great. There's, uh, I think there's two more up on Artsy from the series. If I, remember. Um, I believe so. Two or three, maybe. I, yeah. I'm trying to remember um, great. in total. Yeah. So all they're right. all from the same series. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, so yeah, please, please have a look. Uh, they were in the small show, the petite show. Uh, Dominic, always a pleasure. And always. You at the opening uh, last week. Likewise. Yes. All right. um, thanks, everybody. Uh, or thanks, Dominic. All right. And then we have uh, Pat Sinatra. Any relation? To, any relation to Frank? Yes. I probably get that all the time. All the time. Yep. <laughs> and I tell everybody yes every time I'm asked. And Great. there's like probably that. good cause that. His grandfather and my grandfather lived uh, around the corner from each other in La Carafridi, Sicily. So, yes. <laughs> well, um, welcome, Pat. Uh, this is an encaustic piece, um, and it um, it perfectly captures what I was, you know, what I was looking for for the theme of the show. Where, um, you know, I'm looking obviously for a lot of work with blue but then also with just more a little bit of subtleties of blue and where your eyes immediately drawn to it. And my eye went right to the, the center line. So um, yes, uh, so yeah, please thank you. tell us about this, Pat. This is an eight by eight on a cradle board. It is encaustic and it's also uh, covered with um, ink, Bombay ink. And then I spray it with some alcohol and wipe away and scrape away and add some more. Um, this piece is called Westbound Ute, and um, this is my interpretation of driving down the Ute Highway, which is state, uh, state road or state highway 66 in Colorado, and the Rockies are dead ahead. 
This is also very near to where the Marshall fires took place in December of 2021, where all those people were burned out and entire neighborhood were just obliterated. Um, so this piece sort of captures the uh, smoky remains of the area. Um, this is the second piece that I put in a show with you. And um, interesting is that both pieces uh, are products of my travels going out to Colorado. So I thought about that while sitting here preparing to talk about the piece. Um, and I also did paint this for the show. So I just returned from Colorado and something blue and as well, those mountains certainly were blue. It's, it's wonderful where we, you know, the places that we find inspiration. Um, and the, uh, yeah, the, the West is, I mean, beautiful country out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love hearing that people are creating for the show. That, that, I love it. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pat. There, as, as Pat said, there are um, a couple other pieces of Pat's on Artsy as well. Um, I want to add yeah. one more thing that um, I too am a, an alumnus of Woodstock School of Art. I went there 40 years ago and studied landscape painting with Robert Angelock. So that's where my love lies in doing landscapes. Nice. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> have you been to r and I have been to r and Nice, um, great. That was my introduction to encaustic, um, although the instructor didn't show the day I went for the workshop because it was snowing. So uh, I really yeah. didn't get instruction. Everything else I've kind of picked up along the way. And I'm currently um, enrolled in a year long workshop and I've re uh, reenlisted for the coming up year. So I'm still working. <laughs> Fantastic. I'd love to see what comes out of it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Pat. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, and now our last few. <coughs> thanks everyone for hanging in there. As I said, we've had some technical difficulties today, more so than usual. Today's been a challenge, but um, came together nicely. So thanks for everyone for being so cool about it. Uh, this is Judy Stanger. Judy is a, a wonderful uh, pastel artist um, over in Stone Ridge. Is that right, Judy, Stone Ridge? Uh, yes. Uh, this is called uh, Mohunk Sky Top. It's uh, 18 by 24, which I'm sure a number of people um, are familiar with. Uh, it's completed this past spring. It was plein air from the Ulster County Fairground site where Mohunk Sky Top expresses itself with an impressive command over the Wallkill River Valley. The uh, lighting had blue haze that illuminated the peak and tower and it caught uh, Judy's attention. Um, Mohunk has a plein air, a yearly plein air event for artists that, um, and you know, for observers too, it's, it's always interesting to, to walk around and see artists sort of spread out all over uh, the Mohunk property, just painting. It's a gorgeous sight. Um, so if you are a plein air artist, uh, look into that. I think they're doing it again this year. Uh, the second piece by, oh, no, this is the Mohunk. Ooh, as I told you, today's, uh, yeah, been a little off. Uh, this is the Mohunk piece. The other piece, my goodness, um, the other piece of Judy's is called um, Tucson Meets the Grand Canyon, and that was pastel as well. I'm sorry, Judy, if you're watching. Uh, Margaret Still. Margaret is, Margaret G. Still is an artist uh, here in Saugerties. This is a blue building, blue building with um, skewed front. It's oil uh, on wood, and it's a small one, nine by 11 and a half. We have two pieces from J.D. Weiss. J.D. is a, a photographer living in Woodstock. Um, I have a number of JD's works on Artsy. Um, she's a wonderful photographer that uses traditional two and a quarter film. Um, she's been dabbling a little bit with um, painting and um, encaustic again. Um, encaustic is the word today. Uh, this is called In Repose. It's an encaustic photo. It's 20 by 20. Um, and then again, this is another, uh, your, your eye goes right to the, to the bluebird here um, in the piece. 
Uh, the bluebird was a photograph. The rest of the piece is all painted on uh, it's with pigment and then also um, layers and layers of encaustic. Uh, the second piece is a straight photograph. Uh, this is called In the Blue Zone. Um, it again was two and a quarter uh, film traditional. Um, I think she's got a roll for us. And then we have two pieces by Aaron Williams. Um, Aaron is an artist that lives in St. Louis, Missouri. This is called, uh, the series is called Out of Frame. This is Out of Frame 2. And then this is um, Out of Frame 3. Um, they are monoprints. And the work was an experimentation in monoprint pattern and abstraction. I like the abstract process as it allows me to be more free and emotionally expressive with my work and not bound to convention. So these are two pieces by Aaron Williams. And then our last piece is a uh, gorgeous stoneware cup called um, Glyphic Story, I think it's called. Is that right? Uh, it's stoneware, it's um, eight by six. Um, Dale lives in Port Ewan, New York. Uh, white stoneware with relief carving. It's wheel thrown with indigo stains and a clear, clear glaze. With a relaxed attitude and the availability of time, images flow onto surfaces I create. Nothing perfect showing the finger marks of the, uh, nothing perfect showing the finger marks of the work. I explore the textual opportunity of the clay on the forms I create. Um, protected glass eels, cicadas, bees, sturgeon, and the ecosystem that includes uh, plankton and other treasures from the Hudson vibrating the uvula suspended turning sometimes to jade plants the glyphics that i created have emerged and morphed many times sharing the work with others and having them find the imagery a comfort in their home my heart images are spontaneous then balanced pattern tried and rejected incorporated then sometimes let go infrequently i find that i am satisfied with the results um, if you look really close at some, at, at there's there's um, etchings of all old uh, different writings by Dale. Um, there are some words that you can make out, and then you can't really see it in here, but it it, it really as a, a beautiful um, sort of reflection inside. Uh, not not necessarily a reflection, but you can you can see the graphics on the outside on the inside. It's very nice. Uh, so that is uh, that's Dale uh, Dale Wolfield. Um, and that is our Something Blue show. So um, wanted to uh, thank all of the artists that have joined us uh, today. Um, also wanted to mention a few things that we have coming up. Uh, the next show at the gallery is called Locally Sourced and it is a collection of um, uh, local landscapes. So um, for pretty much all my shows, I do send out a call for art. The uh, locally sourced, there's still, I believe, two more days left um, where submissions are open. So um, I encourage all artists of all, you know, all uh, mediums and styles to um, consider something for the show. Uh, just like this blue show, I like to include all different styles and mediums as long as all of the uh, pieces play well together. Um, and create a you know a, a nice comprehensive show. Um, so that's coming up next month, uh, and then following that, I am super excited to um, be bringing to Saugerties. Well, he's always been here in Saugerties. Uh, I'm in conjunction with Shout Out Saugerties. We're doing a um, exhibit of Harvey Fight's studio sculpture. Now, Harvey Fight, you may know he as a creator from of Opus Forty here in town. If you haven't been to Opus 40, you're really missing out because it is the most magical place um, in Socrates. <clears throat> it's an old bluestone quarry that um, Harvey Fight had spent probably about 40 years turning into a, a gorgeous uh, um, monument, uh, walkabouts, mazes. Um, but it was originally created to um, exhibit his, uh, his sculpture, but the actual Opus 40 wound up taking over um, but he continued to create studio sculpture throughout the whole creation of Opus 40 um, and before. So uh, not many people have really seen his sculptures. It's been in the collection of the families. Um, so shout out Socrates and myself are gonna be bringing some of those sculptures out um, for everyone to see. Many of them have, um, haven't been seen in a very long time. Some of them have been never been seen in public before. Um, one of them, 
is actually his own, his his painting as far as his only painting as far as we know that exists is called African American Man with a Banjo. Uh, there's also a really wonderful bust of um, Marian Anderson, who was the first African American opera singer to sing at the Met. Um, there's a whole series of gorgeous wood sculptures of dancers um, that's going to be shown at the Lamb Center right here in Socrates. So um, I'm super, super excited about that. Um, so please keep your eye out uh, and that's coming soon. Uh, we also have a solo show in the summer uh, by uh, Randy Bloom. Randy's a really wonderful abstract artist that uh, lives over in Germantown. I've exhibited some of her work before um, and I'm really pleased to uh, put together a solo show for her. We've also got um, some exclusives coming out on Artsy. There's some work by Veronica Lawler coming up and also by um, Linda Linton, some works on paper. Uh, so please keep an eye out for that as well. Um, Okay, um, did I talk enough today? <laughs> uh, well, I think that's, that's, probably, that's probably about it. Um, I don't know if I have anything more to say, but um, I think I need to take a sip of water because I'm losing my voice. Uh, so listen, thanks everybody for joining me, everyone that watched, everyone, uh, all of the artists that um, have, have come by today. Again, if, if, I, if I messed up, I sent out the wrong link in my second email to the artist. So sincere apologies about that. Um, I'm glad that you know most of the artists were able to get the link from the first email I sent out. Um, so uh, please come into the gallery, have a look around. It's a really fantastic show. Um, it will be up through August 16th. Um, I think so, day before Easter, whenever, whenever that is. Um, okay, thanks everybody. Uh, have a great weekend. Um, have a look at the Artsy site. Again, there's 66 works in the gallery and then an additional 33 um, on, the, uh, on the site. But if you've been here for the whole two hours and 10 minutes that we've been talking, oh my goodness, um, then you probably saw them all. Um, okay, thanks everyone. And um, we will uh, see everybody soon. Bye. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Nice meeting Thank everybody. You. See you all nice soon. Nice to meet you all. Congratulations, everyone. Yeah. Bye.